So for a hundred years, we've, we've known that the, the Milky Way is filled with um, very, very high energy particles, ultra relativistic particles, energies beyond what you can accelerate at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And in fact, we know that other galaxies have these particles uh, as well. And there's been uh, lots of, of speculation uh, and also you know, many, many attempts to, to pin this problem down uh, experimentally. So where are these particles accelerated? Um, how do they propagate? How do they influence galaxies and, and the clusters of galaxies? Um, and it's been very difficult to make progress uh, on this issue because of a, of a lack of really good uh, observational data. So really what, what we want to do is, is to take this, this, um, this field of non-thermal astrophysics, the, the, the astrophysics of these particles which somehow manage to get uh, an unfair share of the energy. Uh, they're not um, in thermal equilibrium, they, they achieve these, these very, very high energies. To put, to put these particles um, and their, to understand in a quantitative way how these particles influence astrophysical processes um, and to really establish this, this field on the, on the same level uh, as our understanding of the thermal universe, you know, which, which has been very, very thoroughly explored in many wave bands and now has very detailed modeling. And, uh, and this non-thermal astrophysics has, has lagged behind, but we believe that it, it could be equally important in many aspects and that our, our picture of the universe is incomplete and our understanding of, of the way that, you know, for example, the galaxies evolved is, is not going to be complete until we can really put, put this aspect of astrophysics on the same footing as, as thermal astrophysics. The big question is, you know, what, what, um, by what processes are these particles being accelerated? Uh, where? And then what do they do? What is their, their impact? And potentially then by, by looking at the universe and these high energies, we can find out, um, get a completely new perspective on, on, the, um, on the way the universe works and may have to rethink many, many things. The method we use is to look for very high energy gamma rays. So these gamma rays are produced in the interactions of accelerated charged particles um, and travel uh, in straight lines towards the, towards the Earth. Yeah. Now, gamma rays, luckily for us, don't reach the surface of the Earth. They, they interact in the Earth's atmosphere. And for low energy gamma rays, this means that they're basically absorbed and they're gone. But at these terror electron volt energies, yeah, we're talking about photons that are a billion times more energetic than, than X-rays. Um, what happens is that the, the interaction of the gamma ray produces a, a cascade of particles in the Earth's atmosphere. And then individual particles in this cascade can be traveling faster than the speed of light. Yeah? Of course, this sounds implausible. This is faster than the speed of light in air, which is a little bit slower than the speed of light in a vacuum. You know, so these are particles that are ultra relativistic and they go faster than light in air. And then there is an effect called the, the Cherenkov effect, um, which is basically producing uh, a blue light. Yeah, so in the optical band and these cascades of particles therefore make a, a flash of blue light, yeah, which is beamed uh, in the direction of the, of the shower. And if you put a very, very sensitive telescope on the ground um, and look for a few nanosecond long flash of light, yeah, a few billionths of a second, um, you can detect these, these gamma rays. And if we have several different telescopes all looking from different directions, we can very well reconstruct the direction from which the original gamma ray came. Yeah, so it's a, a very indirect way, if you, if you like. We, we use the, the whole atmosphere of the Earth as part of our gamma ray detector. We use these many views of the, of the shower from different directions to reconstruct the direction of the, of the individual gamma ray. And then we have one little point on a, a gamma ray map of the sky. Yeah, and then we, we collect many thousands of such events per, per second. Uh, and over time, we, we build up a, um, a view of what the, the high energy sky looks like in this uh, terror electron bolt domain. When we have um, recorded individual gamma rays. Yeah, we, we reconstruct their direction and their uh, arrival time and their, and their energy. Yeah? From the, the cascade, we can calculate the energy of each individual photon. So then what we can do is, is make a, a map, an image of the, of the whole sky or parts of the sky that we survey. Um, and then we, we will see individual um, uh, sources of gamma rays. Yeah? 
And for each source, we can make the, the spectrum of, of gamma rays. Yeah, we know the energy distribution. Um, and so by exploring the, the, um, the morphology and the spectrum of, of the gamma ray emission from these sources, we can learn something about the way that they're accelerated. What we find when we, when we look at the, the universe in these terror electron photons is that the process of acceleration of particles to, to these extreme energies seems actually to be rather common in nature. Yeah? So originally people thought, well, there'll be one particular special source of these, of these cosmic rays that we see at the Earth. Yeah? Um, and people thought, oh, probably supernova explosions. And indeed, we, we see the shells of supernova explosions. We see that in these blast waves, uh, expanding um, shells around supernova explosions, that particles are being accelerated, yeah, um, uh, unambiguously. But we, we see many other things as well, yeah. So the, the universe seems to be able to play this trick of particle acceleration in, in many, many places. It's, it's not a sort of strange and unusual phenomenon. It's, it's, it's a normal astrophysical process. So we see this in the, in the colliding um, winds from, from stars, winds blown by stars. We see um, close to, to pulsars and in the, the nebulae around pulsars in the, in the jets of, of active galaxies um, um, and emission around stellar clusters. So it, it seems that this is something we, we can't ignore, yeah? that these, these non-thermal particles, particles with an unfair share of the energy, are, are, are everywhere in astrophysical environments. And we really now have to try and understand what they're doing there, what their, what their impact is. Um, and one recent example is the, the discovery that in the, in the very central part of our own galaxy, in the so-called central molecular zone, um, we have diffuse gamma ray emission from all of the, the molecular clouds um, that we see. And from the, this gamma ray glow of these clouds, we can infer the density of relativistic particles. Yeah, and, we, and we see that it peaks uh, at the very center of our galaxy. Yeah, the, the, the profile is consistent with a, a diffusion of particles away from a source which is basically at the position of the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star. And furthermore, the, the spectrum of the gamma rays indicates that particles are being accelerated close to the supermassive black hole to PV energies, you know, a thousand uh, tera electron volts. Um, and, and this was this was really unexpected. So in fact, this is the only place in the galaxy we see uh, acceleration up to these energies. And it could be that all of the PV particles we see at the Earth are actually accelerated at the supermassive black hole, which is um, really against the conventional wisdom. We have for the first time now a, a real picture of, of what is happening uh, at TV energies in, in, the, in the cosmos. And there is, from, from this clearer experimental picture, a growing appreciation of the importance of these relativistic particles in, in astrophysical environments. So, for, for many years, there weren't good measurements, and it was very difficult for people you know, in their cosmological models or their, their models of the way that astrophysical systems evolved. It was very easy for them to, to, to ignore these things, or, or very difficult if they actually wanted to include them, because there were, there were no good data. So, now I think people don't feel like they can ignore these relativistic particles anymore. So, for example, at recent simulations of the way that galaxies evolve, including for the first time in a, in a self-consistent way, um, these relativistic particles show that galaxies look completely different if you evolve them with, with cosmic rays in. Um, and also, the, the process um, of, of feedback uh, on, on scales even of galaxy clusters, um, we believe now may be um, mediated to a, to a significant extent by, by these relativistic particles. We're still lacking experimental evidence there, and we, we need their more sensitive instruments. But there is um, a growing appreciation, I think, of, of the importance of, of, these, um, of these relativistic particles um, and of the, of the, the helpfulness of this t these TV signatures yeah, in, in probing these very extreme environments often and understanding where, where and how particle acceleration is, is happening to these high energies. The, the relevance of this is, is it's, it's one piece of, of the jigsaw of our understanding of the universe, and it's a sort of neglected piece. So putting this piece in um, has the potential to solve lots of puzzles in astronomy and also change lots of ideas about, about the, the way that many systems work or evolve, um, and, and, the, and hence the, you know, the impact on the on cosmology and the way we view the history of the universe.
So be, beyond understanding the, the impact of relativistic particles, um, with, with TeV photons in, in the future, we, we hope to, to search for um, the annihilation of, of, of relic particles left over from the Big Bang, so, so dark matter particles. Yeah, and this is actually a good chance to see um, a gamma ray signature of, of such particles and, and learn about the particle nature of, of dark matter. Uh, we can also look for, for new exotic particles like axions, and look for, for deviations from, from Einstein's theory of, of relativity that might occur because of quantum gravity effects. So because we're working with these very high energy photons, we, we have lots of potential to explore um, particle physics questions, if you like, in, in addition to, to understanding this, this astrophysics. So it's clear that if we want to make real progress uh, in this field, then we need better instrumentation. Um, we, we, we've more or less done what we can do with, with current instruments uh, and we have a very ambitious plan which is to construct something called the Cherenkov Telescope Array which is a big international uh, project, 32 countries, over a, a thousand scientists are involved um, and CTA will be more than a hundred uh, Cherenkov telescopes built on, on two sites in the desert in Chile and, and, and in La Palma and this, this instrument will be much more precise much more sensitive and also cover a much wider energy band, so giving us access for the very first time to energies of hundreds of TeV. Um, and, and importantly, it will also be for the first time a, 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 a true observatory in the sense that you have in, in, in other well-established wave bands, not, a, not an experiment or, or some cutting edge um, um, small team of, of experts doing it, but we want to have with, uh, with CTA key science projects um, to, to tackle key things, but also the opportunity for, for, for interested scientists from around the world to say, I, I want to look at, at such and such a, a source. Yeah? I want to look at Eta Carina, I want to look at, at Hydra A. Um, and people will, will get their, their, uh, their data from the observatory. So it's, it's a sort of service mode of, of observation. Um, we want to open the community up, um, basically, um, put the TEV waveband into the astrophysical mainstream and, and have people using TEV data together with X-ray data, radio, radio data in a, in a routine way. Yeah? So this is a sort of coming of age, if you like, of this field of astronomy, where we go from, from um, just proving that it works, if you like, and proving that it's interesting to really having it uh, used by, by a very wide community.